Howdy, welcome back to another tutorial. This one's gonna be quick. I recorded it like four times, so it better be quick. But yeah, today I'm gonna be talking about rays, which can be used to, I don't know, detect if one part sees another part, if a part can see through a wall, stuff like that. You can also make a gun, which just looks like an Allen wrench, but it's pretty dangerous. Like, that guy's dead now. You're being held at gunpoint, so make sure you subscribe, like the video, uh, slide your wallet to me, you know, stuff like that. I'm kidding. Where am I? Anyway, enjoy today's video. Enough stalling. Let's get into it. So ray casting is pretty easy. Basically, imagine this right here. We're a monster. And this is a player. This french fry is a player. I was lazy, okay? This monster cannot see the player. But if the monster walked around the wall, that player is red now, meaning the player can be seen. If this monster was behind the wall, it could, the player cannot be seen. The monster's behind the glass, the player can still be seen. But the monster has bad eyesight, so if it were about 100 studs away, or something like that, it cannot see that player. But if it got closer, it could. Bad explanation. Hopefully, my amazing diagram that I just created helped you understand that. But I'm gonna show you how to do that. So, it's pretty simple. I don't think I'm going to script much in this video. Well, actually, I think I will. I will. We're going to recreate this. So insert a script uh, part into your workspace. We're going to make this our monster, which is green for Shrek, because Shrek is awesome. We're going to name this monster part. We're going to duplicate it with control D. We're going to add our player and our player is an awesome purple guy because he's Thanos. So Thanos versus the Hulk base. No, Thanos versus Shrek. Because why not? We're going to name this human part. So I want to detect if the monster can see the Thanos. So inside of the monster, we're going to insert a script. Ignore everything in workspace. We don't need it. So our first two variables are going to be the player and the monster. So local player part equals game.workspace dot player uh, human part. We'll just switch this to human part. And we'll do local monster part equals script.parent. Now, let's create some params. I'm going to explain to you what params are. You need them for ray casting. So you see how with this previous example, the monster could see through the glass, but not this part. That's because I specifically said, hey game, allow the monster to be able to see through this specific part and the game said okay so that's what params do i'm gonna give you a better example by duplicating these parts and moving them here we're gonna put our beautiful thanos part instead of there we're gonna put our monster here we're gonna name this part amazing glass because why not don't forget to name your script by the way you're really gonna want to do that but um let's cast a ray so let's do local first we need a direction so local direction equals and it's really easy it's just the monster's position minus the human's position so we'll do human part dot position minus monster part dot position next we just need to cast our ray so local result because i'm I, you can name it whatever it could be ray ray cast i'm just gonna do result because that's what most people do equals workspace ray cast and the first ones are origin where it's coming from i want the monster to be the thing that's looking so we'll do the monster as the origin the ray is coming from the monster so we'll do monster part dot position comma we can add our direction which we just we already made that and the third thing is our params so let's make some params i want the game or at least the monster to ignore this glass like it can't see it so we'll do local params equals raycast params dot new then we'll do params dot filter type equals enum dot uh, e whoa enum dot param uh, dot ah raycast filter type dot exclude and we'll do params dot filter descendant instances and we'll just do equal z and the curly brackets so if you choose exclude instead of there's two options there's exclude include 
Most tutorials use whitelist and blacklist, which are deprecated, so you have to use exclude and include. If you do include, I mean exclude, anything that's inside of these curly brackets will be ignored by the ray. So if I put the glass in there, the ray can't see the glass. If include is the opposite. So we'll, we'll use exclude for this. So inside of these curly brackets, I'll just do game.workspace.amazingglass. And now the game will ignore the glass, or at least the ray will ignore the glass. As long as we add the params. So we have to add the params to the end. Our ray is complete. Now let's make something happen when the ray hits the part. Because it's already being cast. We just don't have anything to detect when it does hit the part. It's just going to do nothing. So we'll do if result. So if the ray exists. And result.instance. So instance is basically whatever the ray hit. Then. So we'll do if result.instance double equals human part. So if it sees the human part, if the ray hits the human part, then this code will run. Then uh, human part dot color equals color three that from RGB. We'll make it red and we'll do else. We'll paste it. We'll copy the human parts color. We'll paste it here. So if it sees it, it'll turn red. Otherwise, we'll go back to its Thanos color. And if we run this code, actually, let's put this inside of a loop. Let's copy all of this and we'll just do well past dot eight. 0.1 do. Now, if you run this code, we have our part that if the monster were to creep around this wall. Oh, we have to add the direction. I'm dumb. You have to put the direction in here. All right. So if the monster creeps around this part and sees the player, our Thanos part, the player is now in danger. So they have to hide from the monster and now the monster cannot see them. But if the player were standing here and the monster were on the other side of the glass, the monster could still see him. So we basically replicated these two things over there. Now an issue is if the player is here, the monster, I mean if the monster is here, the monster can see the player from any distance, which is not really good. You don't want your monster to have supervision. That's kind of annoying. So it's really easy to fix. Just go into your direction and do this. And then add dot unit dot unit is like I'm not good with math but the easiest way to explain it is when you do this whatever we multiply direction by is the amount of studs that ray can be cast so if we do times 100 the ray will now go 100 studs rather than indefinitely so if we move this part far away if we move the monster far away and we put it here where it would normally have seen the player the player is still purple, but oops, but if we put the part from here closer, you can see the player can be seen now, but there's an issue. If the player is, if, I mean, if the monster loses the player again and it goes beyond 100 studs, the player stays red. Very easy fix is just copy this human uh, part that color equals purple one. Go into this if result an instance, uh, result instance, I cannot speak do else paste that there now we have a functioning sight system so these parts can see each other if the if the player manages to run away they can no longer see each other that's pretty cool now let's look at the gun because I did make a gun I do want to explain it so now you know how to do this the gun's pretty easy if you look here in our starter pack we just have a gun which is a tool I did a tutorial on how to make simple tools so if you are confused, please watch that. I'm not going to explain this too much, just how it works. So there's a remote event which allows the server and the client to talk to each other. They can send data back and forth inside of this tool. So we have two scripts, server side and client side. Let's talk about client side first. On the client, we have the tool as a variable. We have the remote as a variable. We have players, player, which is the local player and cursor, which is player get mouse so that's basically where your mouse cursor is so whenever the tool is activated meaning you clicked it will fire to the server cursor dot hit a position which is basically wherever the player's mouse was when they clicked so it's basically just ray casting but made really easy so you can't tell but there's a hidden parameter here the first parameter is technically 
player but since it's on the uh, local script you don't have to add it so let's switch over to the server on the server we have these same variables except we have character and we have a few things like tool equipped and unequipped uh, so basically the character by default is nil when a tool is equipped it sets the characters it sets the character to the tool's parent because when you're holding an item the parent of that item is the kit player's character if the item isn't being held it's the player's backpack so that's why it sets it to it changes the character basically if the tool is equipped versus if it's not equipped to prevent the player from shooting themselves so basically to explain this when the remote is fired it will get the player that fired it position is this it's the cursor's position so we have our params which i just taught you about so right here you can see it ignores the player's character so if the player tries to shoot himself they can't the origin is the gun's position so the guns if we go back to gun, you can see it's tool, handle, union, which is the actual like Allen wrench shape. And the direction is just the position. So wherever the player clicked minus the origin, which is the gun's position. So it's the gun's position to where the player clicked that unit so that we have like a maximum amount of range. Yeah, I'm explaining it in a bad way, but basically this is just guns position to where player clicked position then we just have our ray when it's cast local part equals result dot instance so this part is just set to whatever the instance is so if you were to shoot a tree the part is equal to tree it's i'm not sure how to explain it i'm kind of dumb but um the humanoid of the player is the part it so like if the player shoots uh something that has a humanoid you can see here it will check if it finds a first child humanoid or the parent of the part or the parent parent of the part finds humanoid then it will do if humanoid take damage 10. so basically if the instance is a humanoid it will damage it otherwise it won't do anything and if you shoot uh anywhere further than 100 studs so like if I click the sky, the gun will say no result. And if I click a hundred stars away, it will say no result. So if we go into our game and test, I shoot the sky, no result. If I shoot the ground over there, no result. If I shoot here, you see nothing prints, but there's nothing happening. If I shoot myself or click myself, nothing happens. But if I point and shoot this rig, he takes damage until he dies. And if I go on the server, you can see uh, where it says he actually died. So I didn't explain that super well, but this project will be in the description. So please use this for whatever. I will be making tutorials on how to use this with NPCs to make monsters that can see players. Really soon, I promise. I'm just tired tonight. It's 2 in the morning. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. Or tonight's tutorial, technically. I hope you can do something awesome with this. I will see you guys tomorrow, hopefully. So... Have a wonderful night or day or evening, whatever it is. Remember to brush your teeth. Bye-bye.